Hello friends, this video on natural resources part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So we are now going to talk about some very important cycles called the biogeochemical cycles. So what is biogeochemical cycle? So let us focus more on the name bio which means life. Geo means earth and chemical, okay, it means chemicals. So all the biotic and abiotic components of the ecosystem, they interact among each other in some or the other way. For example, living beings need water. So living organisms, which is the bio component, interact with water, which is, which is not a bio component, which is a non-living component, that is abiotic component. Similarly, plants need soil. So plants, again, a biotic component, soil, abiotic component. So these are nothing but interactions between the biotic and abiotic components. So biogeochemical cycles, they tell us about the constant interaction and transfer of energy between various components of the biosphere. So we will see that there is some sort of transfer of energy from one component to the other. Like when we talk about, uh, let's say, let's talk about the food chain. For example, human beings, they feed on plants, right? So human beings feed on plants. So what's happening? The energy is energy stored in the plants is getting transferred to human beings. Now these human beings, they also need water or you can say plants need water. So plants are dependent on water. So in a way, there is an interaction between water, plants and humans. So there is not only an interaction, but also a transfer of energy between these. So in biogeochemical cycles, there are certain, not every cycle is biogeochemical cycle, but there are certain biogeochemical cycles which tell us how, uh, so these cycles tell us that how a particular component is exchanged between different parts of the biosphere, how a particular component, for example, if you talk about water, how water gets cycled from earth to the atmosphere, to different living organisms. So how this entire cycle works? So in biogeochemical cycle, all the biological, geological and chemical factors are involved and that is why they are called biogeochemical. So we will talk about four biogeochemical cycles and they are water cycle, nitrogen cycle, carbon cycle and oxygen cycle. So let us start with water cycle. So what is water cycle? So basically water cycle will tell us how the amount of water is cycled between various components of the biosphere. Now, let's think in this way. For example, rain. So rain happens how from the atmosphere, the clouds are there in the atmosphere. So clouds are nothing but droplets of water in the condensed form. So when these clouds, they fall in the fall to the earth or fall to the ground that is rain now when rain happens it seems as if the content of water which was there in the atmosphere the, it came down from the atmosphere to the earth so does that mean that the amount of water in the atmosphere has now reduced no there is something else which is kind of compensating the amount of water in the atmosphere that is what we are trying to say is now there are certain processes by which water from the atmosphere is coming down. On the other hand, there are certain processes by which water from the ground is going up to the atmosphere. And as a result of these two kinds of processes, the net amount of water remains constant. So let us look at this uh, picture on the screen. So let's talk about one such process. For example, in the presence and during the daytime by the sun's heat what happens the water in the water bodies undergo evaporation so water in the water bodies like oceans or fresh water or springs or uh, ponds or lakes so they all evaporate to form water vapor on the other side the water vapor they condense to form or to give rise to rain so in a, on, from one side water is going up to the atmosphere, from the other side the water is coming down from the atmosphere in the form of uh, snowfall, rainfall or whatever form of precipitation. So that's the water cycle.
Now, the process is not that simple. Now, I think looking at the picture, you can understand that this process is not very simple because there are multiple number of ways in which water is going up to the atmosphere. And again, there are multiple number of ways by which water is coming down to the earth. So let's look at the process in a more organized manner. So what happens? So one way by which water goes into the atmosphere, evaporation of water from water bodies due to the heat of the sun. So this is one way by which water goes above, right? So this is how water goes above. Perfect. There is another way by which water can go above to the atmosphere that is by transpiration from leaves of the plants. What is transpiration? The loss of water from the stomata of leaves of plants. So you would have seen that plants get water from the soil through their roots and the excess water in the plants is lost through the tiny pores present on the leaves of the plants. So that loss of water is known as transpiration. So in, by the process of transpiration also the water is released into the atmosphere. So these are the two processes by which water is released into the atmosphere in the form of water vapor. Now, since we are, so in this case, water is going to the atmosphere. So, what are those processes by which water from the atmosphere will come down? Let's have a look. So, what happens is, these water vapor which are getting accumulated in the atmosphere, this water vapor condenses to form clouds. That is all the water vapors, uh, when the temperature falls down, the water vapors condense to form tiny water droplets which accumulate over the dust particles present in the atmosphere to form clouds. Now the condensed water vapor falls as rain, snow or sleet depending upon the temperature. So when the clouds become heavy enough, they fall as rain or as snow if the temperature is very uh, low. So that's how rainfall happens. So basically rainfall is one way by which water from the atmosphere falls to the earth. So you see what's happening. So let's say that these are the water bodies, okay, or like oceans, lakes, rivers or whatever. So from these water bodies, the waters are getting evaporated. So they form water vapor, which in turn form the clouds. And again, these clouds fall as rainfall back to the water bodies. This is a very simple look of this uh, water cycle. But besides this, there are other processes also. For example, transpiration also adds to the water vapor. Now, it is not only rainfall which directly comes to the water bodies. Some of the rain water also uh, comes to the underground water, also becomes the underground water which we fetch in the form of wells or tube wells. Some of the water also get used up by various living organisms. Like we drink water, we use water for cooking so we do all of that but finally the unnecessary water or the uh, excess of water comes out of our body also and that water also finally meets the ocean so that's the entire logic of water cycle now when it falls as rain now the rain water doesn't go to the ocean directly but it can go to many other places for example it can remain as surface water like the water which is flowing on the roads on the streets that surface water it can be underground water underground water in the sense the water which is fetched through wells or tube wells it can also get into the water bodies like ponds lakes or um, rivers Water in the soil promotes plant growth. So the water which goes deep inside the soil, that water gets utilized by the plants. Water fetched for drinking, cooking and all other purposes through wells or tube wells. So see, these are the various ways by which the rain water gets utilized. But at the end of it, what happens? So if you look at any of these, what happens to this water at the end? So the surface water might fall finally into a river and the river will finally meet the ocean. The underground water might get fetched by using wells or tube wells and then they might be used for cooking or drinking. Finally, a part of the water will get utilized by the living bodies, but the excess water will again be excreted either in the form of urine and then that also goes through your sewage and where does your sewage go that also gets treated and the treated sewage is again dumped into some water body right and that water body again finally meets the sea so the end result of all of these is the sea so that means this starting point was also from the sea that is evaporation of water from the sea 
formed the water vapor and here also all of these water is going back to the sea. So we see that there is a kind of balance which is getting maintained in this entire ecosystem. So water from all sources ultimately reach the water bodies. Now in between this a lot of other things are happening. Now a lot of um, water is getting utilized by plants, a lot of water is getting utilized by marine animals, by human beings, by insects, by birds. So all of that is happening in between. But if you look at it from end to end, you see that water is uh, the water cycle starts from the sea and it also ends at the sea. So this it is a cycle or it is a cyclic process. That is why it is called water cycle. So this water cycle tells us that how the content of water is maintained in the biosphere. So you see we have formed this cycle. So all the water reaches the water bodies and again from the water bodies evaporation of water would take place. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.